Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Randy down here at Phoenix Gun Range alongside of Nate. Six Sport Tactical. Yep, with Nate. And we're gonna be uh, looking at, well, it's a, a Gen 2? Yeah, Gen 2. Gen uh, 2 kel -Tec. okay. kel -Tec, <laughs> kel -Tec's kind of one of those that, I don't know, it's, they're very innovative, I will say that for them. As far as their platform itself, it's probably not the chosen platform of many people, <laughs> but I have yet to see one that's really bad. As a matter of fact, with the modern manufacturing, I don't see too many that are bad anymore. They have a lot of controversy on some of their innovative designs they're coming up with. Um, I know they have one shotgun platform that they're trying to make a little bit better. I can't remember right offhand which platform that was, but as far as the Sub 2000 when it first came out, I tell you, that, that's one that a lot of people yeah. raved about because of, it's not modular, but it folds up. It, it goes from 34 inches and it folds up and it's 16 inches until you're done with it. And it makes it really nice to be able to throw it in a backpack, take it out in the woods with you, or keep it in a truck gun, whatever. And, you know, I don't know about a truck gun because when you open it up, you're not going to have a whole lot of room to swing it around. Yep, but at the same point, it's very diverse with you can get it in nine you can get it in 40 like the one I have here is in 40 and here coming up soon with the uh, sub 2000 gen 3 they're coming out with right that flips up and flips to the side so you can have your optic on it and not disturb it right it's gonna be in a 45 ACP and quite possibly they could also offer one in the what is it the uh, seven the by small caliber thing yeah, I know which one you're talking about uh, I can't think what it is right off the top of my head but there's also uh, talks of uh, 10 millimeter. Yep. So that one will be coming out relatively soon. Yeah. So I think that'd be good because I tell you that that's a round that's really starting to take off. But a lot of people are gravitating towards a 10 millimeter. Right. There was a lot of hoopla about it back years ago, and then they pushed it to the, you know, to the back of everything, and now it's starting to make a resurgence again. And I tell you what. I personally don't have a problem with the 10 millimeter. It's not. I've got to give shout out to High Point because when they brought that 10 mil carbine out, I feel like 10 mil kind of hit the market again as far as carbines. Yeah. And now the PCC market is starting to pick up. Wait a minute, it wasn't a good handgun caliber. Well, actually, so let's put it in. A actually, rifle. they're saying right now that their uh, JC or JP10 is one of the best handgun models they have. Yep. Okay, so they've made some strides with it, and they're they're continually going forward, all right. And like we discovered before with the high points, it wasn't necessarily the gun that was the problem. We determined that it was the ammunition that went into it, and it did swell at the bottom of the case, causing it to jam. So I can't say that it's a gun I'd carry, but you know, for range plinking or something yep. to keep in your bed stand right yeah you know, that kind of thing it, it'd probably be a good a good option to have you know it's one of those it's inexpensive a, it's an inexpensive gun that you can buy that hell a box of the ammo probably costs as much as the gun now <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if you have to defend your home or yourself you're not going to cry because now you're out thousands of dollars because you're only out you know 150 170 maybe today's price a gallon of milk and a carton of eggs and maybe some bacon no, you're getting cheap bacon then. <laughs> okay, well, anyhow, let's jump. Let's just jump right into this Caltech, okay? Um, of course, Caltech is kind of like no frills, okay? So they don't put a lot of extra money into the packaging and things like that. And as you can see, it comes in this nice luxury cardboard box, <laughs> okay? Which is fine. I mean, nobody's going to carry it in the cardboard box anyhow. But hey, everyone's got to start somewhere. Gibson started out. Hey, it doesn't matter. You know, like I said, that's how they package it. They ship it to you. It's up to you what you want to store it in. Okay. And there's a lot of great options out there for that as well. So you want to go ahead and break it out? Yeah. Okay. So straight out of the package, you're going to get the luxurious box. You're going to get the, the car being folded up. And it's going to come with a 10 round magazine that is actually a factory Glock magazine. I went ahead and did load it up. Um, however, that's the magazine that comes with it straight out of the box. And this is how it's going to appear in the box when you get it, minus the ammo. And you can go ahead and break it out. Alright. Get her up out of there. 
So here, here's the unique thing about one of these. You see it's folded over in half, so it's 16 inches long, okay? Now how do you release the front? Just pop that forward here. There's a little lever in the front. Okay, we'll look at that again. You can see it moving here. All right, pop that little lever forward, and then you just open it up, snap it in place, and now you have a full length rifle, okay? So you got a 16 inch barrel on this, a minimalist stock, okay? Basically what some people would call is a pistol grip. Pistol <laughs> brace. Pistol brace, okay? It's lightweight. I mean, I don't think it weighs a whole lot, really, to be honest with you. Nope. And that's one of their claim to fame that it is a light carbine. It does have M-lock support. It does have Picatinny rails. It's got the rear charging handle. It does not lock open on empty magazine. To fold it back up, you're gonna push this or pull this and then fold it right back up. Um, this particular model comes with suppressor ready. I don't know the exact uh, thread on it right at the moment. It is a chambered in 40 cal. And we're going to see how it goes. Well, let's go ahead and get her loaded up and let her rip. Yeah, I had to think about that, how you unlo or unlock that thing, but that's actually a pretty simple unlock. Now, he was talking about the Gen 3, how this one just folds over the top like this. The Gen 3, when you get to this point, it will actually spin, okay? When you get to 90 degrees, it'll spin outward. So when you come the rest of the way down, you can leave your optic mounted on top of it and it won't affect it. I'm not too sure I like that plastic peep sight, though. <laughs> we'll find out how that is. Yep. Okay. You want to take it over from here? I got to take care of some business. Yep. So, with that being said, we're going to take our first shots with it. It comes with the California 10-round magazine. We're going to go ahead and put that to the side. I've got a couple of factory Glocks. These are 15. To charge it, you have to pull all the way back and release. And that charges around. And then we're going to see how this goes. Don't forget to put your ears in. Oh yeah, <laughs> thank you. That's gonna get a little bit loud, a little bit fast. Oh yeah, I think these are uh, 180 grade. Okay, do not shoot that dueling tree though. That's only quarter inch steel. Yep. However, you can pull the charging handle back and lock it manually. It is ambidextrous on your lock open because you can pull it on you. Oh, this model does not have the ambidextrous. Never mind. And it's got the enlarged uh, mag release as well. Well, I seen that you kind of wussed out when it was moving and wanted to wait till it come back flat to you. Didn't <laughs> trust that angle? No. But I will say this much. I was questioning that sight. It looks like it's uh, pretty on there. Yeah. All right. Well, let me give it a shot and see what we got. Did you talk to him about the cross bolt safety? No, I did not. Okay. Well, this one has a cross bolt safety. The safety is actually up here where you can hit it with your index finger. Okay. Just like with any other safety, hit it with your thumb on the opposite side, index finger to make it uh, safe. But like with any other safety, it has the red ring on it. So red is dead. Okay. So we'll put it back on safe. We'll get her loaded up and ready to go. Oh, I get the fun stick. Yes, you do. All right, we're going to see how she handles a fun stick here. <laughs> Is there a trick to loading that in there? I guess not. <laughs> All right, so let's make her ready to rock and roll. See what she can do. Okay. There we go. Oh, 
Let's make her safe. We're going to pop this out. We got a failure to eject in the round. The magazine don't want to come out. We're going to call that a magazine failure. Yeah, I'm going to say so. Let's pull this back and see what we can get. Yeah, see, it didn't, it, no, it wasn't a failure to eject. It's a failure to load. Okay, so we'll put that back up in there. Hold on to that one. We'll take a look at it later. And there she goes. Ready to rock and roll some more. Okay. Just like with the high point. Okay, and I'm going to say this right now. Just like with the high point, it does not like the extended magazines or the big magazines. Okay, because this one here, we just had the second failure to feed and now it's stuck okay i'm not too not liking that what the hell she does not want to work that was it okay let's see what you can do with it see if you can get that out of there what was i hitting her on okay it did clear the chamber too oh, yeah, right it there was it trying is. to double feed it's trying to double feed on it all right, well, we got that straightened out there. It was trying to double feed is what it was. Well, actually, it wasn't even trying to double feed. I should have gave you a good uh, look at it. The magazine, I don't know if it's because of the pressure behind an extended magazine, which has a little more spring pressure. I think it... But the bullet was actually on an angle like this instead of going up the ramp and in like yes. it normally would. And also, this is not a factory extended mag. This is a plus three mag. So it does have that extra spring tension in it. So that's actually a good test because I've got, I want to say 10 of these and I didn't know if they were going to feed. Yeah. The only gun that I have that they'll run through is my Glock 27. Well, I'm wondering if, just like with the uh, high point, if you short load them, if yeah. it'll work better. Because I'm, I'm sure that until you get the springs broken in, you might have to short load the magazines. Yeah. Be, you know, minus two or three to be able to get it to feed good. Absolutely. That definitely does make sense. All right. But so that's we're, the factory time. So we're hot again, ready to go. Want to put me on the target there? Okay. Failure to eject. So we had a failure to eject on that one. Okay, I'm done. I'm, do I'm done with it, all right? When I have four failures in that close of a range, I'm not even going to consider the gun anymore, all right? That's just my personal thing. It may wind up, it may just need broke in. I don't know. But if I can't pick the gun up out of the box and be able to fire through a magazine without having failures, I mean, he did fine on the first run, but now all of a sudden it's having failures. It's the same ammunition, same magazine. So there's something going on there. I don't know if it's spring tension. I don't know if it just needs more lubrication in the tube. Whatever it is, we'll have to, uh, you know, address that and figure it out. Okay, but as it stands right now, I'm I'm going to say no. Hi, I'm Randy from Phoenix Gun Range. We'd like to invite everybody to come down here and enjoy the facilities. We have multiple pistol pits, all of them outfitted with steel targets. We also have rifle pits, which we put target boards up for people to zero or to shoot into. And then we have steel beside those to confirm your zero. We also have over 140 different training courses that we can put you through. We would love to have you come down here and train to learn whatever you want to learn, whether it be basic pistol, advanced courses, um, combat pistol, you, you know, whatever you're interested in. We have courses, a lot of our courses are drill related or drill oriented so that you will learn how to transition from one target to another. Uh, with that being said, I would just really enjoy people coming down here. This range is for you, it's not for me. It's for you to be able to train, become very proficient with the tools that you choose to protect yourself and your family and your loved ones with. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to whatever it is you were doing, or go back to the video that you were watching. Thank you again. 
Okay, so as far as my final remarks as, as that goes, it's lightweight, easy to handle, okay? The felt recoil on it wasn't too bad, okay? Granted, we're stepping up to a 40 in that rather than a nine. And even with a 40, it wasn't that bad. But when I had that many malfunctions that close together, yeah. Okay, that that's very concerning to me. Now we're gonna we're not just gonna right away write it off. At this point, what I'm saying is until we figure out what's going on, whether it just needs cleaned up good and oil, you know, a different kind of lubrication, maybe it's fitting you on a ammo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the mag that I ran through it, uh, there was two different types of ammo with it. Uh, the first mag I had was uh, Federal White Box, or not, uh, Winchester White Box. Okay. And that was, I don't remember the name of the brand on it. I bought it in. Well, uh, the two that I had before, now what were they? What's that head stamp say? Uh, federal. Okay, these two were federal that were failure to feed. All right. I don't know what that last one was there. But either either way, whatever it was, yeah, we'll, we'll investigate that a little bit further. We'll find out if it's just something that's inherent to that particular ammo. Yep. Yeah, that maybe the gun just doesn't like it. Because I know I have guns that are very finicky about what they eat. Yeah. Okay. Um, would I have a gun that is finicky? Well, I obviously do have some. But I wouldn't go out of my way to get one. Put it that way. Yeah. I don't care how pretty the gun is. If it doesn't work, it's not going to help me. Exactly. Okay. And um, I have seen some reviews on the gun before I purchased one. And I have only seen a couple of reviews on the 40 cal which is what initially drew me to it on buying it in the 40 because I like the chamber 40. I like the 40, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a heavy hitter, you know, 180 grain versus 115 grain. Yep. I mean, that that's that's a man stopper is what it is, okay? And there's no question about that. It's a good round. It's a very, very, and it's very versatile well. If you're out in the country and you got a yeah. bear run up on you, yeah, it's not gonna stop like a 10, but essentially it is a 10. So it might take an extra shot versus you're but it's going to at least give you the opportunity to save yourself. Exactly. You know? And, yeah, I, I, I have no issue with a 40. It just, for some reason, lost popularity over the last several years. Probably because of the popularity of the 9 millimeters and the micro 9s and all that coming out. Exactly. Um, but I like the way it felt. I like the way it shot. It reminded me of shooting a straight-out-of-the-box um, PSA AR-15. It had the same snap. Um, and as a 40, it, it had the same recoil as shooting a standard 5.56 five, or yeah. a 223. I'll, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. It, it, it is very reminiscent of shooting an AR, okay? An entry-level AR platform. You know, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and all the frills and stuff like that that these people are paying thousands of dollars for. And this gun doesn't have all that stuff. And at the price point of this gun, once we figure this all out, you know, it may wind up being a really good gun. We don't know. If we do, if we do figure it all out, we'll do a follow-up video, and then Absolutely. we'll tell you what we honestly think about it. You know, we'll get a thousand rounds through it and say, hey, okay. Once we figured out the hiccups, this is what we got. Yeah. Yep. But we can't get the thousand rounds without your support, your subscribing, liking, and sharing, because we need that content or that all the subscribers and the viewers to give us more content or like our content. That way we can produce keep more making guns. more i mean we we had initially intended to make possibly as many as two videos a week and upload them okay i don't want to do this video a day thing because that just gets to be way too much absolutely all right and i'm trying to run another business here as well and so is he so we, we got to kind of take what we can get you know and do some videos and like we said initially these guns are guns we own they're not something that somebody's giving us to test okay we're, we decided we want to test these out and see if it's something that we want to keep or that I want to sell at the range here, you know, because I do have an FFL and I like being able to put the tools into people's hands to be able to practice with. And if that would have been a reliable tool, I would have said, hey, yeah, why not? Let's do it. But as it stands right now, I don't think I'm going to stock that, but who knows what's going to come down the pike if we get this figured out. And I will give it an advantage. That's straight out of the box. No lube, no nothing. That's straight out of the box. Right. Box, mag, target, let's go. I don't, yeah. when I grab one out of the box, I want to test it exactly how it came, exactly how it is, stuff rounds into it. Is it going to fail or is it going to function? Because exactly. I agree with you that. You don't have time to grab a gun out of the safe and, oh, let me oil this real quick. I want to know if it's going to run right now. Right. And what a lot of people don't understand is even with your bolts and everything, when you oil them, 
it's going to suck in that oil. It's yeah. not going to stay wet indefinitely. You know, you're going to have to re-oil it. All right. And that may be part of what that was. It may have been, you know, because the bolt's dry. It could be, you know, the buffer tube area. It, uh, you know, just is dry and needs to be lubed up good. I mean, it could be just a number of different little things that we could do to make it function properly. But I agree, out of the box, not so favorable. Maybe after we clean it up and lube it good, it may run better. So with that, I'm gonna have to say at this point, I don't really recommend it, but I'm not gonna bash the thing and say, no, it's a piece of junk because we don't know that. I recommend the nine mil all day long. Oh yeah, I, I've seen those, they've been around forever. And I know a lot of people that have them that absolutely love them, okay? And it's just like, uh, I know, shouldn't be talking about High Point on the same video with it, but that uh, PCC I got with High Point there, that 995 TS. Yep. I had a guy down here shooting, and he had an Evo 3, a Scorpion Evo 3. And his son was shooting the Evo, and I brought down that 995, and he preferred the 995 over the Evo. You're talking a, a sub five hundred dollar gun versus a twelve hundred dollar twelve hundred dollar gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I just I found that to be interesting, and I thought it was funny that he liked that gun over the Evo. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, well that kind of wraps it up for us for today with this one. Uh, we're going to be coming back with some more stuff. You know, we got some things we want to look at, some things we're going to give it, you know, run it through its paces and see what we can do with it. All right. So until the next time, this is Randy, Nate, same. See you Have next nice time, Ralph.